I'm an associate pastor, and I thank God for that. I'm a good second man. I really am. And I, I like my position. I, I like my position in my house, and I think that's probably why I do it so well in the ministry. You, I like you being in charge. I, I like that you handle it and, and do what you need to do. And, I, and I'm going to help you stay in your place, too. Amen. Amen. But when, you go, when you're going through that area, that time, Yes, it's a time of hurt. Yes. It absolutely hurts. Most of us like to believe that there's something about us that other women don't have. Mm -hmm. But biologically, all of us are pretty much the same. Right. Some a little larger here, some a little smaller there, you know, whatever. But we are all basically the same. Yes. And so since men are more visual than we are, if what he's looking at, would you want to take that somewhere? Then there's a problem with your presentation. And even when I don't want to minister at my church, even when I could stay at home and watch T.D. Jakes on TV, when I could sing near my God to thee in my own bedroom, when Arthur's trying to be my bedmate, I still find myself getting up because I was called That's right. to a ministry. That's right. When I started recognizing my marriage as a call and not just something we agreed to do, I approached it differently. I approached it from a place of being broken and I started counting up the cost. That's the first thing on my list. The Bible tells us to count up the cost. So I guess, first of all, I'm talking to women who have not got married or in a place of perhaps remarrying. You need to count up the cost. Yes. If you're talking to people who won't tell you the truth, then you find somebody else. You got my phone number on the card, call me. I'll tell you how much it costs me. And I'll tell you if you can find a deal, you'll do better than I did. But it cost me something. Yes. Yes. And everything I've ever valued in my life cost me something. Yes. Even salvation, yes, it was free, but it cost me yes. my life. I had yes. to give up my life if I was going to be saved. I had to give up the life I thought I enjoyed. Yes. Getting yes. drunk on Saturday. Yes. Just to top the week off. Yes. I had to give up some of that junk for the sake of salvation. And so what do I have to give up for the sake of my marriage? What do I have to give up for the sake of my husband? Because if you have multiple degrees and you marry a man that don't have a GED, why are you mad at him? As a matter of fact, I'm mad at you. Because you didn't count up the cost. You should have looked up from brother's feet and checked his mind out. Because now that you done got four months into the marriage, you mad because he don't articulate well. You angry because he's busting birds down as you go out at night. You mad because he don't know what filet mignon is. He thought it was somebody's name on the menu. He's ordering quiche and calling it quenchy. And it sounds funny, but I'm telling you what my girl told me in my office. Just because she got a PhD and he's got a GED, she's mad because he can't order at a French restaurant. Well, when y'all was doing a wild thing, you wasn't thinking about no French restaurant. Nothing about that. All right, you're talking to pass this on. Okay. Come on, come on. My people know this how we come. Come on. Alright, you say I'll have to apologize for that. Right. But that's what I said to her. She goes, I can't believe you're gonna take his side. I said, I'm not taking his side. I'm taking the side of right. You married him with a GED. Now you got a PhD. What you want? I want him to go back to school. That's good. Does he want to go back to school? Well, no, he said he ain't going. Then you need to live with it. Right. You married it. How dare you say you're going to divorce him because he do not want to go to school? You repent. Get saved. Start over again. God didn't call you for that. Minister to the man that God gave you. If you married it and he's not saved and you got saved, God waited on you. What 
what you mad about. God loved you when you was dirty. Change your diapers when you pooped on yourself. When your breath smelled like beer and you mad because he drinking beer. You used to drink it. Talking about you got beer in my fridge and wine in the fridge. Well, you had your can in there before. And you gonna divorce him when y'all was both in the world together? Love him through his, and you said you love him. Amen. You were unfaithful to God. You was loving your car when you should have been loving him. You was loving Neiman and Dooney and Burke when you should have been supporting the ministry. That ain't nothing but infidelity. You was giving your body to biker shorts and stuff when you should have been giving it to God. Nothing but infidelity. You were worshiping your own body instead of worshiping the presence of God. Nothing about but infidelity. Equated on a spiritual level. Now, let, let me put a disclaimer on that. Okay, e even though girl came from like a fighting background, like my mama had like nine kids and most of them was boys and so like we was kind of rough. And so, um, uh, I'm I'm not for the fighting, okay? Uh, my husband's about six foot nine himself. So when I counted up the costs, the first thing on my list was I couldn't whoop the brother. That's what I said. That was number one. And so when we had that little meeting before we said the I do, we had to get an agreement yes. that you can't breathe in my face and hit me in my face too. Yeah. Yeah. Is that clear enough? Yeah. That ain't happening. That, that is not foreplay for me. You, you didn't slip and make a mistake. And, and it was your fault. Your fist met my eye. That's your fault. That's a problem. It wasn't like I was running into it or something. But it's your fault. And that if I made you that angry because my tongue is an unruly demon. And I'm trying to tame it. But if it does cause you to be that angry, there are a lot of walls in the house. And you can leave. You know, drive off somewhere. But you, you don't get to... <laughs> that was a stick on my shoulder that you could not knock off. Now I know some don't mind playing Ali and Frazier. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. But don't come to church and want us to whoop him because y'all whooping each other. Because we want both of y'all because I have one girl boyfriend gave her a, a, a black eye. And then when I looked at him, she had hit him with the cast iron skillet. Look at my look. I need both of y'all to make a decision here. Okay. God didn't call us to that. So That's God, right. he is not the author of that type of confusion. So if we're going to arrest him in his violence, I need to handcuff you in yes. yours too. Yes. Because if you're going to draw a line in the sand, you got to be willing to live by it yourself. Yes. And I don't care if your parents did fight. That doesn't mean that you have to carry the generational curse down to your house. Is that right? And, and you certainly don't want to teach that to your sons and daughters. And draw a line. If, you, if it was happening in your relationship before, draw a line and say, look, I like you, brother, and you all that and everything. And chips and soda and all the good stuff and well, I like it. Uh -huh. But this is what I'm talking about. Put one of them loose women up in your bedroom. That's your room. Trying on your clothes and stuff. What's wrong with you? And my mother would say, have you lost your mind? Yes. Don't do that. Protect your area. Protect your area. If, if the man that you are trying to connect with is whorish before you get with him? Come on now. Oh, come on. Wow. What makes you think he's going to reform because he married you? We're talking about cults. We're talking about counting up the cults. If, if he went with five other sisters in the church and you number six, do you really think your ice cream is that great? Oh, 
that when you marry him, he ain't gonna try to go with five new ones that join? Can we just talk flat? Can we just? And everybody in the church know he's a hoe. I know they don't normally call me and hoes, but I do. Anybody who's sleeping, everybody ain't a hoe. I know it's notches on their belts. Forgive me, my little brother. I know that for them it's considered notches on their belt. But if your belt is too raggedy for me, you just a hoe. God can make a whole husband. Yes, he can. I believe there's nothing yes, too hard for him to do. But if you know you married a whole, why are you in my office crying because he's going with Sally? Can I go one look? Can we go a little deeper? If you got with him while he was living with Sally, why do you think just because you married him, he ain't going to pick the Susan? Because if he was at her house and you got him from her house, you ain't doing nothing but leasing the vehicle until the warranty runs out of the house. Just like the woman at the well. Where's your husband? Well, let me see. Harry Frank. Jimmy Bean down there, Jimmy, J and he ain't your husband. Wait, no, I mean, <laughs> Kinda, we live together. <laughs> Count up the cost, ladies. If he's not willing to walk a line of fidelity before you say the I do, listen to him. He is not going to change. You can't make people change. Your forgiveness doesn't change the person. Your forgiveness changes you. The only forgiveness that changes people is God. And unless he has the strength Yes. To ask God uh -huh. to deliver him yes. from the whore that lives in his spirit, uh -huh. he will always be what he is. Yes. Yes. And if you love him, you'll have to go back. Everybody had a word to say When all I needed was a little 